Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the Netflix live action Avatar The Last Airbender season one. Benders have the power to control an element, water, earth, fire, air. It's the Avatar's job to maintain balance in the world. They're special, they can master all four elements. When an Avatar dies, a new one is born. It's a cycle of reincarnation. Our story begins at the Southern Air Temple with a young airbender named Aang. He's a happy-go-lucky kid who's already mastered airbending, but Monk Gyatso has some big news for him. You're a wizard, Harry. Yeah, that's right, Aang's the new Avatar. That's a lot of pressure for a kid, so Aang talks to his sky bison, Appa, and flies off to go have a think. The four nations live together in harmony. Harmony, but now everything changes when the Fire Nation attacks. Fire Lord Sozin's gonna start a war now while the new Avatar is still a kid. He knows the new Avatar will be an airbender, so he's gonna wipe out the entire Air Nation. So the Fire Nation attacks the Air Nomads. Oh yeah, big bend in battle. Apparently there's a comet tonight which gives firebending a super boost, and so Fire Lord Sozin does it, kills every last airbender. Everyone, that is, except the one he's looking for. Aang ended up lost in a storm, and oh, a tidal wave crashed underwater. But his avatar powers kick in, and he saves himself by freezing into an ice cube. Now let's travel to the far south at a small village in the southern water tribe. Here we meet a young waterbender, Katara, and her funny, sarcastic older brother, Sokka. Today they find Aang's iceberg, and having them near lets him break free. It's like, oh, hey guys, what did I miss? But Grand Grand's got some bad news for him. You missed a lot, kid. You've been frozen for a hundred years, and you are the last Airbender. Yeah, the war's been raging for almost a century, and the Fire Nation is mostly winning. In fact, there's a Fire Nation ship nearby, led by Prince Zuko, who's specifically been searching for the Avatar. Zuko's a real angry young man, but his uncle Iroh is a lot more chill. But Zuko has no chill, he's been banished, and capturing the Avatar is the only way to regain his honor. Sokka's father tasked him with defending this village, so he challenges Zuko to a one-on-one -on -one fight, but mostly gets his butt kicked. So to protect the village, Aang gives himself up, he goes quietly. But Katara and Sokka go to rescue Aang, they hitch a ride on Appa, yip yip. With Aang's airbending, he breaks free, and the whole gang gets out of there. They take Aang home to the Southern Air Temple, where it's confirmed all his friends are dead. This makes Aang real mad, it activates the Avatar Avatar state, in which he gets a super boost, channels the full power of the Avatar. But Aang doesn't know how to control it yet, so it's very dangerous for anyone nearby. So Aang feels extremely guilty that he wasn't here for the last hundred years, but now the Avatar's back and ready to save the world. So Team Avatar flies off on Appa and recruits a new cute animal companion, the winged lemur Momo. First Aang needs to learn how to be the Avatar, so he visits the shrine of a past Avatar, Kyoshi. The shrine is guarded by the Kyoshi warriors, but when they see Aang is the Avatar, they decide he's okay. They're led by Suki, who's a master warrior in the way of the fan. She gives Sokka a martial arts lesson, and oh, these two are flirting hard. So Aang communes with his past self and meets Avatar Kiyoshi. To save the world, you gotta be the strongest warrior, and you can do that by mastering all four elements. Katara never had any waterbending training. The Fire Nation killed all the waterbenders in her village, but her grand-grand packed her a waterbending scroll, so anytime she passes water, she stops for some practice. Aang should practice waterbending too, but this whole season, he's like, nah, I'm good. Meanwhile, Zuko is trying to pick up the Avatar's trail. He can't let the rest of the Fire Nation know, though, because he has to be the one to capture him. But Commander Zhao thinks Zuko was acting suspicious and picks up Aang's trail first. He rolls up to Kyoshi Village like, hey, weird question, is the Avatar here? So Suki and Sokka defend the village, showing that non-benders can still kick butt. Kyoshi's like, Aang, let me show you how it's done. Since you're near my shrine, I can possess you for a bit. And boom, Aang busts in there, channeling the spirit of Kyoshi, who shows him what a fully realized Avatar can do. So the day is saved, Suki and Sokka start smooching. Kyoshi has a warning for Aang, the Northern Water Tribe will be under attack, so the gang has a mission, they're gonna fly north. But that's far away, they gotta make some pit stops, and their first one is at the Earth Kingdom city of Omashu. It's holding strong against the Fire Nation armies, but firebender spies are inside the walls. The gang befriends a nice inventor, the mechanist working for the King of Omashu. Aang's like, hey, I'm the Avatar, let me help you root out these Fire Nation spies. Aang hangs out with the mechanist's son, for whom he's built a cool flying wheelchair, while Sokka helps out with his latest design, a war balloon, and turns out Sokka's a great engineer. But Katara finds out that the mechanist is working with the Fire Nation, and there's someone else following him too. It's a cute boy. His name is Jet, a freedom fighter, taking the fight to the Fire Nation with his band of misfit orphans. He's like, yo girl, you're gonna love this. I've got a plan to bring the mechanist to justice by blowing him up during his audience with the king. Uh, won't that kill some innocent people? But that's a sacrifice Jet's willing to make. So Katara's gotta stop him, thwarts the plan just in time. So it turns out Jet is kind of a douche and he and Katara have a falling out. As for the mechanist, he's not a bad guy. The Fire Nation forced him to help them by threatening his son. And now there's more firebenders inside 
inside Omashu because Prince Zuko is hot on Aang's trail. We're behind enemy lines, don't firebend in here, but Zuko ignores his uncle's advice and burns the cart of a cabbage merchant. My cabbages! So with the guards coming, Iroh takes the heat to let Zuko escape, but Aang's arrested too for being part of the disturbance. Aang's brought to see the King of Omashu, who's a very old guy with kind of a funny, crazy vibe. He reminds Aang of a friend he had in Omashu a hundred years ago, Boomy. And yeah, that's him. He's very old. He's a little bitter that he lived through a hundred years of war while Aang was happily chilling in an ice cube. He wants to teach Aang a lesson about responsibility with a fight to the death. Katara and Sokka come to rescue Aang. They meet these hippie musicians who tell him about the secret tunnel into the palace by singing the famous secret tunnel theme song. But the secret tunnel is full of danger. They're attacked by giant badger moles. But turns out badger moles like good vibes, and as long as you love each other, they'll be chill. So Boomy and Aang are having their fight. Boomy's old, but he's a master earthbender. He drops two boulders to crush them both to teach Aang the lesson in war you gotta make tough decisions. But just then Aang's friends bust in to save him, so Aang learns a different lesson. As long as you got friends, it'll all work out. Uncle Iroh is being transferred to a serious prison because before he was a kindly old man, he was a Fire Nation general that laid siege to the Earth capital of Ba Sing Se where lots of people died. Pretty soon Zuko rescues his uncle, but Iroh doesn't kill this guard. He's seen enough of death because in that siege, Iroh's son died and he learned the true cost of war. And it's a touching scene as a young Prince Zuko comforts his uncle and they start playing that song, Leaves from the Vine, and everyone's crying everywhere. Now Team Avatar comes to a burned out forest where the spirits are all out of whack and the Avatar is the link between the spirit world, so he tries to help. The spirit world is a cool but scary place where some spirits are mostly nice, but others are decidedly not, like the terrifying Ko, the face stealer. Ko captures Katara and Sokka and traps them in a nightmare of their worst memory when their mom was killed. Luckily, Aang manages to escape, and he meets a friend, Monk Gyatso, who was waiting in the spirit world in case Aang came. It's like, yo man, Ko is real bad news. The only person who ever bested him was Avatar Roku. So Aang flies incredibly far to the shrine of Avatar Roku. Roku's a fun friendly avatar. He's like, yeah, bro, I got you. I stole this totem from Ko. You can trade it for your friends. Meanwhile, Zuko's hunt for the avatar hits a snag when Commander Zhao's been promoted to Admiral Zhao and put in charge of all avatar business. Yes, we meet Zuko's father, Fire Lord Ozai, who is a real bad dad. He doesn't really care if Zuko stays banished. He's got a spare heir, Zuko's sister, Azula. Azula has a natural killer instinct, and she's a prodigy firebender. But Ozai's a bad dad to her, too. No matter what she does, he's never impressed. So Azula busts out to super advanced firebending technique of lightning bending. Yeah! She's like, yo pops, I'm done with training. Let me prove myself in the war. And that's what Ozai wanted to hear. So if Zuko wants to capture the Avatar first, he's gonna need some outside help. He hires a hot bounty hunter, June, who rides a crazy shrew thing, and she's very good at her job, immediately captures Aang. But Zuko can't keep Aang for long. Pretty soon Zhao comes to commandeer him, leaving Zuko with no way to regain his honor. Zhao locks Aang up in the impenetrable fortress, but now who's this coming to rescue him? It's the mysterious Blue Spirit. The Blue Spirit manages to break Aang free, but it's an epic fight as they're trying to escape, working together, yeah! But Zhao has a squad of master archers who, oh, knock the blue spirit out. And now Aang sees who's behind the mask. It is Prince Zuko. Aang's like, hey man, thanks for rescuing me. But Zuko didn't switch sides. He just needs to capture the avatar himself. And now we get the story of Zuko's scar. When he was a kid, he was a much nicer guy. But at his first war council, his father wanted to sacrifice a squad of new recruits. And Zuko was like, hey, that's not cool. But his father did not depreciate his insolence and challenged him to an Agni Kai, a firebending duel. Zuko had an opening to fight back, but he couldn't bring himself to attack his father. But to Ozai, compassion is a weakness, and to teach his son a lesson, he's the one who gave Zuko his scar. And that's when he banished Zuko to never return unless he captures the Avatar. But there's a heartwarming detail to the story. All season long, Zuko's been rude to his crew, especially this poor Sideburns guy. But now Iroh fills them in that they are the squad of new recruits that was gonna be sacrificed. And so Prince Zuko saved their lives, but it cost him everything. Now Commander Zhao quickly figures out that the Blue Spirit was Zuko. And so he sets a trap for him, boom, blows Zuko up. Now back to Aang, he rescued his friends and they finally make it to the grand city of the Northern Water Tribe. They're excited to have the Avatar on their side, but Aang reveals he hasn't learned waterbending yet. They're like, oh, well, we could teach you now, but Aang's like, nah, I'm good. But Katara's looking forward to training with a master. Training by herself has not been great, and she learns a great technique to use waterbending for healing. She's like, that's cool, now teach me to fight, but in the Northern Water Tribe, women aren't allowed. But Katara's having none of that. She challenges the master to a duel, and somewhere along the way, I guess, Katara got real good. Of course, in the end, the master wins, but he kinda didn't, though, cause Katara showed everyone girls can fight. Sokka's been busy laying the charm on their princess, Yue, and turns out Sokka's a Rizbender. They immediately make out, too. 
But now the Fire Nation's almost here. Zhao is leading a massive armada. So the Fire Nation ships launch their attack and the battle for the North is underway. But turns out Zhao has a stowaway because Prince Zuko survived. Zuko manages to sneak his way in, but he's confronted by Katara. And turns out she is a prodigy waterbender, declares herself a master now. Now the frontal assault is not going great, but Admiral Zhao has a trick up his sleeve. It's the new prototype war balloon designed by the mechanist and Sokka. See, waterbending is stronger with the full moon, so this was a bad night to attack. But actually, it is a very good night to attack because it's the one night a year where the moon and ocean spirits take physical form and can be killed with the spirit knife. So Admiral Zhao has an insane plan. He's going to kill the moon. He sneaks into the spirit oasis and grabs the moon spirit koi fish. But Iroh's like, yo man, you're going too far. You can't be messing with the spirit world. And so Uncle Iroh switches sides. But it's too late. Zhao stabs that fish and the moon is destroyed. Without the moon, waterbending disappears, and so the battle gets very bad. But now Aang talks to the other fish, the moon spirit's friend, the ocean spirit. Aang still can't control the avatar state, but he can channel the ocean spirit's power. And so he turns into a giant water Godzilla monster and quickly turns the tide on the firebenders. Zuko, meanwhile, tracked down Zhao, but Zhao defeats him with a truth bomb that was obvious to everyone except Zuko. Finding the avatar was a wild goose chase. His father doesn't want Zuko to to be unbanished. The only reason he even let Zuko live was to be motivation for his real heir, Azula. So Zuko's world is shattered, but Uncle Iroh kills this guy. Aang is on a giant fish monster rampage, finally makes a tidal wave and destroys the rest of the fleet. But with no moon spirits to calm the ocean down, Aang himself is lost forever. But there's one way to save the moon. Princess Yue was blessed by the moon spirit as a kid, and so she can sacrifice herself to bring the moon spirit back. So overall, the day is saved. The Northern Water Tribe got totally wrecked, but it could have been a lot worse. Prince Zuko's not sure what to do with his life anymore. He's gonna just go chill for a bit. Aang is going to continue his quest to stop the Fire Nation and save the world. So in season two, he should probably learn to bend some of the other elements. But Fire Lord Ozai is not too concerned with the bad news at the North Pole because his daughter Azula just won a more important battle. She finally conquered Omashu. And he gets some more good news. The comet from 100 years ago that gives firebenders a big boost, it's finally coming back. And that's where Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1 comes to an end. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.